right. We're back. Once again. It's been a week. Did you miss us? I feel brand new. I'm I'm nearly a different person. Well nourished. Yeah. Well rested. Mm-hmm. We feel fantastic. Drink a lot of water. Water. I'm rehydrated. Water like from the toilet? No, but ugh, it's such a good segue. You know what I didn't have? What's that? Bottled water. Bottled water. Yeah. Now, I've heard of water like from the toilet and water from, I guess, the ocean. But uh, what is this bottled water of which you speak? So this subject, its history actually started way earlier than I anticipated. I thought that this this was going to start in like, you know, maybe the 1800s, maybe. But no, we are going to we're going to we're going to we're going to time travel to 1622. All right, let's hop in the time machine. That's our time machine voice. That's what it sounds like. It, oh, we should have done a Doctor Who reference and gone, whoa, 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 Okay, this is terrible. This is terrible audio. We need to stop. Um, so the Holy Well bottling plant in the United Kingdom was the first bottling water plant in the world in 1622. The Holy Well. The Holy Well. You always mm-hmm. take me such luxurious places. <laughs> uh, the main reason was for the perceived medical value of spring water. It always seems to go back to whatever medical value for whatever product they're trying to sell you. What? Why? Why can't we just sell something because it's convenient and it's fun? The end. It's kind of the same today, though. You know, you can't just sell people pretty rocks that you found on the beach. They're healing stones. Yeah, you're right. I like pretty rocks as much as the next person, and no one has ever tried to tell me that my my engagement ring is going to... You know what? They did. They did. They told me that my engagement ring was going to bring me happiness. Oh, boy, were they wrong. No, I mean, I'm pretty happy, but I don't think it has anything to do with the stone in my ring. I mean, it could it, it could be a fake for all I know. How do you still know happy. it doesn't have anything to do with your ring? Think about that. Because there's a lot of women out Checkmate there. Checkmate non-believers. There, there are a lot of married people out there who are unhappy, and I guarantee you that they have some of the most expensive rings. Yep, Look the at most celebrities. expensive cubit zirconia. That's what did it in. Next time you'll be ready. Oh, okay. So this, the Holy Well bottling plant, they actually sold in pharmacies in Europe until the 1900s. That was a long run. 1622. It went for almost 300 years. Yeah, all the way up into the 1900s. So the history of bottled water predates our country's independence with records of water being bottled and sold from Jackson's Spa in Boston in 1767. Mm, That good old Boston water. Mm. I've never had Boston water, but Jackson's Spa sounds nice. So in Geneva, Switzerland, bottled water hit a significant milestone when Johann Jakob Schweppe sounds right discovered a way to carbonate water for a delightful fizzy quality, it's like sparkling water. S- sparkling water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you elitist jerks. Well, no, I mean, like, if you're, if, if you are trying to only take in water as your main source of liquids, then sparkling water is probably a wonderful alternative to flat water. I mean, at least now you have some options. You can't take away my good old fashioned American made Coca Cola. Back off of my beverage, liberal. I, I thought you liked Pepsi. I do like Pepsi. Don't tell people that. They'll make fun of me. Oh, I didn't know that Pepsi was... Is it hum- is it humiliating to like Pepsi? I mean, Pepsi's definitely the underdog. Really? This, this is a Coca-Cola country. Well, see, I always like Pepsi because um, that commercial with the little girl, she had the really curly hair and she was like the Pepsi girl. The Pepsi girl. You know the Pepsi girl? Did Pepsi have a Pepsi girl? Yeah. I don't remember that at all. She's really young. Okay, the reason I like it is because that's Jesse Eisenberg's sister. What? Jesse? Wait. Okay, this podcast has completely changed topics. Jesse Eisenberg's sister was the Pepsi mascot? She's not a mascot. She was a she was a human girl. She was a she was a girl and she drank Pepsi and she was cute. She had really long black curly hair. 
and they have the same adorable smile. Ugh, I could go on and on about Jesse Eisenberg. I didn't know anything about any of this. This is crazy. This changes my view of everything in this world. Well, let's get back to bottled water. We'll, we'll come back to the Pepsi girl. Okay, thank you. We're not going to come back to the Pepsi girl. We're just moving away. Oh. So in 1856, 7 million bottles of water were sold in Sarasota Springs in New York. Very famous at the time. A, a pint of water was sold for a dollar seventy-five. And this is dollar seventy-five for a pint. That sounds pretty affordable. I'll take it. This is eighteen fifty-six. So in today's dollars, that's fifty-eight dollars forty-one cents. Fifty-eight dollars for a pint of water. Mm-hmm. That's almost as much as diesel. They were what? <laughs> Thanks, Joe Biden. All right, this is we we okay. This is not a political podcast. The reason that they were able to sell it this high is because people were afraid of typhoid and cholera, and uh, that led to bottled water dependency. They were scared. It's not a, that is that is a really uncool thing to do. Kind of like how people were making uh, masks during the pandemic that they were selling for hundreds of dollars because they were supposed to be like the best mask, but it was just like a microphone pop filter that you're supposed to stick on your face. I did not know that that was happening. Now I'm sad. Yeah, that was totally a thing. Mm, okay. In 1908, <laughs> uh, water disinfection methods, uh, first practice in New Jersey, like chlorination, were discovered as an effective way of combating the typhoid epidemic, and bottled water lost popularity. I mean, why pay for something that's free and safe? You know, next they'll try and sell us air. Which they might. Stay on the lookout, people they're after us why are you so paranoid you were like ex- especially paranoid this episode what have you been watching what happened to you a week ago now i watched these documentaries the other night and it turns out everything we know is a lie 9 11 was an inside job and we never landed on the moon okay wake up sheeple no no oh my gosh well, this is about bottled water <laughs> <laughs> Bottled water isn't real, people. It comes from the toilet, okay? You're drinking toilet water. Wake up, sheeple. Well, you know what? That is, there is a little bit of truth to that. There is a... But we're going to get we're gonna get to that part. It came back in fashion thanks to some serious marketing c- campaigns. Um, drink companies realized that they could only sell so many sugary beverages. Like, there's only so much Pepsi and Coca-Cola that a person can ingest in one day. But you know what people drink a ton of? Water. Whiskey, uh, water. Water. Wa- yeah. And something needed to be done to continue growth for those companies that were only selling sugary beverages, so they started bottling water. The most notable campaign that changed the way people viewed bottled water was the Pierre. Is that Perrier? Yes. It was a $5 million campaign in America. It was meant to popularize imported water, it, branding it as luxurious and renewing health and image and status. So that worked Fancy out well water. for them, huh? That method has worked well for a lot of companies. Drink drink this water. It's more expensive and will make you look cooler. Is that why Fiji water is so popular? Yes. Because it's imported water. Mm-hmm. So fancy. Fiji it's water. exotic. It's Fiji. In 1973, Nathaniel Wyeth invented the polyethylene terephthalate bottle. P-E-T, I know that one. Mm-hmm, if you which... look in the bottom of your plastic totes, they'll have a little symbol that says P-E-T or P-E. Fun fact, has nothing to do with bottled water. If you're curious of what something's made out of and if it's food safe or anything like that, you can look at the little marking on the bottom and find out what it's made out of. Just a fun little PSA from us to you. <laughs> this pet plastic was groundbreaking for carbonated beverages because you couldn't have you couldn't bottle carbonated beverages before this. It had to be in glass. And this was a big deal for sparkling water and sodas, but... Plastic is so easy and environmentally friendly. We stopped cutting down all the trees. Here's plastic. I know. I can't believe that that campaign actually worked. Why didn't we just use bamboo or hemp or all any of the other... Anything other than trees? I use hemp four times a day. No, you don't. By the early 2000s, tap water was fully engaged in a war with bottled water. 
Uh, beverage companies were playing on customers' fear of contamination with tap sources. They were bringing up uh, boil advisories, and one of their key players in this war was Brita Filters, which further alleged the fact that toilet water and tap water was from the same source. So they were like, the same water that comes out of the faucet fills your toilet. Why would you drink that? Yeah, we don't drink toilet water. We're not animals. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I this oh. no other episode information has made me more angry than than this one. It's ridiculous. They're just profiting off of people being scared. So there were significant developments in 2011 due to rising environmental pollution concerns caused by plastic bottles, which remains the most common garbage found in the ocean alongside cigarette buds. The EPA set regulations by reducing the weight of pet plastic bottles from 47.7 grams to the current 9.89 grams, which I remember that because those caps got real thin. Yeah, they got real real small and hard to twist back on your bottles. But it did make it to where those bottles were easier to crush up and put in your garbage can or your recycling. So you're telling me... That by replacing all of our, our wood and paper products with plastic, we created a problem? Mm-hmm. Ugh. A, a, a horrific problem. Plastic is a horrible, horrible problem. One of these days, we're going to get it right. We know, we all know that human intervention uh, trumps nature every time. We're going to, we just got to figure it out one of these times we're going to be right. I did not anticipate this podcast to be so sarcastic. I am not good with sarcasm. I'm sorry I'm being such a downer this episode. <laughs> so I have some really sad statistics or, or some oh. really sad fast facts. Here we go. Yeah. So a thousand people in America open a bottle of water every second. Oh my goodness. <laughs> For every six bottles people buy, one is recycled and then only 50% of what we put in our recycling actually gets recycled. So that's like one in 12 bottles is recycled. I'm... I like to think that it's accident, but I'm assuming that a lot of it is corruption <laughs> of why our recycling is not actually being recycled because, like, the public is actually putting it in the recycling, and then what happens after that? Should I go on an anecdote about how somebody on the city board of New Orleans told me that recycled materials all just end up in the same place as trash? No, that'd be too sad. Let's move on. <laughs> it takes three times the amount of water to make the bottle as it does to actually fill it. Wait, say that again? It takes three times the amount of water to manufacture the bottle as it does to actually fill the bottle. And then that gets thrown away, the bottle. You drink the water and then it's gone. Pet bottles require giant amounts of fossil fuels to make, and that is, you know, as you know, a non-renewable source. All of the fossil fuels that go towards making all of our pet plastic bottles, like I didn't even get to drive anywhere, I just drank some water. It's the American way, burning up them fossil fuels and all I had to do was drink some water about it. It takes almost 2,000 times the energy to manufacture bottles as it does to produce tap. Just to turn that tap on and all that sweet, life-giving water comes out 2,000 times the energy to put it in a bottle. <laughs> uh, Americans drink more bottled water than milk or beer a year, and consumption was increasing 10% each year. Now, I don't know if it's still increasing, but this was a year ago. Do you have anything in, in your notes about how bottled water miserably failed in other countries? No, I don't. Very well. Proceed. Plastic bottles leach chemicals into your drinking water when exposed to heat. We don't even want to talk about microplastics. I do know that it bottled water is not common in other countries. Um, I, I talked to one guy in Germany, and he is very confused anytime I talk about water filtration systems or bottled water or anything like that. He's like, why, why are you not just drinking your tap water? It's a weird thing in America. We have a lot of, and I get it, some, some tap water in some places is super gross, but like uh, Tom Scott had a good video about how miserably bottled water failed in Britain Everybody just kind of like laughed them out of business and they were abandoned because it is a stupid idea. It really is. So here's some alternatives. Um, boxed water. 
That's not a, thing. a it's not a great alternative, but it is an alternative to all of the plastic bottles that are usually more readily available. Um, reusable water bottles, reusable water bottles, people. You can buy a you know what Yeti Yeti. I know it's expensive, but it's a great brand. It keeps your water cold or hot or whatever it is that you prefer. There are a ton of reusable water bottles out there. You can go pick your favorite one. They have fun colors. They have straws, which I suggest you get a straw cleaner to go with that straw because straws weird me out. They also have canned water, which comes in an aluminum can. Like uh, Liquid Death has canned water. The idea behind that is that uh, the aluminum in the cans can be recycled much more effectively than bottled water in plastic. Is, is LaCroix even like a water thing? Is that like, isn't it like fizzy water? LaCroix is a flavored carbonated water. It's very lightly flavored. Okay, I was just making sure I wasn't. So, so that's something. If, if you're here. looking for an option, that an alternative to soda, uh, Lacroix is might be a good option. Or uh, there's also various companies that do the same thing as Lacroix. I do have one fun. Um, it's called Oh the edible water bottle. Oh. Oh. Uh huh. It's O O H O. Oh. Uh. It's a clear <laughs> spherical membrane made of sodium alginate. It's a thickener, like an algae, and, and calcium chloride. And these are all ingredients in food. They are low cost to make, so they're about two cents a sphere. And uh, it, this, this product still has a lot of improving to do. Its shelf life is very low, and its membrane is really fragile. But it was really cool to look at like the little circle thing you put in your mouth and then it pops and then you drink water have you eaten one of these water bottles no but i want to (laughs) so uh find your nearest local edible water sphere manufacturer and try them out i do have some anecdotal uh things from friends and family i asked all around the different people the different people that we know in different states um pretty much all of them have some kind of filtration because of the chlorine taste. It's pretty strong, so they do something to fix that flavor. Um, the only person in the States that does not use a filtration system, and they are on um, city water, city water, they, water, they are like two steps from the water tower. They're mm. extremely close to the water tower, and I don't know if that has something to do they with that, why theirs tastes better. They got that fresh water. But they, yeah, they were the only people that did not do something for their for their water. And if you have a well, uh, your water is going to be much cleaner. Well, in a way, it's still going to have a lot of minerals, but a lot of those minerals are good for you. So, well water is good. We like well water. We always, we grew up on well water. Um, I did talk to one person out of the country, and again, it was, it was our, it was a German man, and he was very confused why I was asking him about his water and if he even drinks his tap water. He said that they do have, um, it's called a, a lime filtration system, and it has nothing to do with how, how it makes the water taste. It's simply to keep the pipes from rusting, and they, they pretty much he doesn't know a single person in his in his small area of the country that uses any kind of filtration system for for the taste of it. Yeah, we really dropped the ball over here. Yeah, Europe is a lot way ahead of us in their tap water and making it available, making it delicious, not scaring people away from it because it's in the toilet. <laughs> So I also have some um, bottled water companies that will just put municipal water. They they will source it. They will source tap water and put it in a bottle and then sell it to you, which is an atrocity. Because why are you paying? Why are you paying for water that you could also get out of your own tap? They they take the same water that you would otherwise be drinking. Mm-hmm. They put it in a bottle and then they sell it back to you. Mm-hmm. And that's Dasani. 
which yes. is Dasani is owned by Coca Cola, right? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You can never trust those guys. Nestle. Ugh. Aquafina. Can't trust them. <laughs> Aquafina, and Smart Water is uh four uh, four that I have on my list that really? I know for a fact do that. Smart Water. Mm-hmm. Wow. For as much as they like to try and convince you that they're they're the good guys in their commercials, what do you know? And then we do, there are above ground free flowing spring water sourced companies. So they are at least putting more effort into it. They're not just filling up bottles from the tap and then selling it back to you. Um, Poland Spring, which is a, a natural spring in Maine. And then Deer Park, which is a natural spring across the U.S. And then Ozarka, which is a natural spring in Texas. And then Crystal, Crystal Geyser, a natural spring across the United States as well. Ozarka's awesome. We used to drink a lot of Ozarka whenever we lived in Louisiana, but now we live in Utah. And they don't have Ozarka now here, up here, because it's Texas. And also, we don't really drink bottled water anymore. We have a Brita water filter. We have a water filter and we fill our reusable um water bottles we're so sustainable Mm, we do our best but let's just i'm gonna stand on my soapbox about individuals not being blamed for pollution preach sister it is not the individual's responsibility yes we can help but we need to shine a light on big companies who are doing 70 percent of the pollution and then blaming us and then telling us, why are you using plastic bags and not recycling your water bottles? Meh. Yeah, yeah, money, money, money. Anyway, this is the saddest podcast. But hey, there were no animals. There weren't any animal sacrifices. Can I drink water from a goose? No, but you know what? I'm sure someone popped open that goat and got a mouthful. As long as you don't sun the goat beforehand, you don't want Ugh, that warm gosh. water. Warm goat, goat water. skin water. The water's a bit musty today. Me flavored water, 15 cents. All right, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for listening to this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Do we know what we're going to be talking about next? Um, I think it's going to be zippers. And also, the next episodes are going to be better. They're going to flow easier. Thanks for sticking around with us this far. If you're still here, uh, things will be getting better soon. We appreciate your patience. And uh, I'm Ben. And I'm Danielle. And uh, grab a goose, sun your goats, and uh, use a reusable water bottle. Water bottle. Use a reusable water bottle. See, this is why you can't keep just stacking them on top of each other. You gotta just pick one. Sun your goats and use a reusable bottle. Really reusable bot. That's the hardest one to say. Sun your goats and don't buy bottled water. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. It's not great, but it is better. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Nah.